Oh, I've cracked on with the painting. And I did put some uh, really fine pasty filler on these, like a two pack filler, because they were a bit, they, they weren't, they never, I don't think these castings are ever kind of really clean when they come from the factory. So you can see a lot of machine and tooling marks on them and the corners are always rough. So I've sanded, I've filled them and I've covered them with three coats of etching primer. And I'm, which I'm gonna flat off, but they look really nice compared to what they were. And here's the actual bed, all degreased. I've not really done much on the bed other than give it a good wire brush and clean and sand um, and give it a good healthy coating of etching primer. Again, that didn't need much work. Um, that was a, that, that had quite a bit of filler put on it because that was fairly beat up that and scratched and marked and all the various components of the cross slide have all been sprayed. The tailstock had to do quite a bit of work on that because it was a bit of a mess. I've not gone overboard, honestly. I've just got some of the rough marks out of these things. Um, and the rest of the parts are hanging from above my head, which I keep walking into. Yeah, a lot, most of the work on this lathe. <laughs> has been cleaning all these components, thoroughly degreasing them and getting them ready for etching primer and not so much the painting really, that doesn't take long but god damn it's all this, it's all this cleaning that takes the time you know but anyway they're done now it's come time to paint uh, Mr Myford guys so I am just to get on with that. It's not exactly the best day for painting that there ever was. And that just about does the first coat on everything, I think. Yes, it does. Favourite part. Painted the stand this morning because the forecast said there was no rain until after lunchtime and I mean as soon 
as I gave it the last pass on the top it started raining. And of course everything was wet so I couldn't move it, could not move it. So by the time I put a cover over it there was a few spots of rain hit the top. Doesn't really matter, it's just a few little dimples of where it's hit the wet paint in the bottom of the tray and we don't care about that, we're not bothered. But, uh, let's get all this masking tape off this Myford. Overall I'm very pleased with how it's come out. On yeah. average everything's had three coats, some parts have had more. It's had three coats of etching primer. So there's a good thick coating. The actual inside of the stand. I don't think Myford ever, bother, ever bothered painting the insides because it was red with rust. Everything. So that took me a good hour to get a sander in there and sand all that rust off and I have primed and painted it in there. Because untreated metal in someone's shed you're going to get rust. Now when I come to put the headstock uh, or the spindle shaft and bearings together there is some wear in them obviously because when I put them on and clamp it up it still spins and it doesn't matter how hard I squeeze them the tight but the, the shaft is turning and obviously it's, it's going to be better if there is <laughs> if you're able to apply some force onto that shaft otherwise there's going to be a bit a little bit of play and it's the same at the front as well. clamp that squeeze them as hard as you want and there's this play there's actually a bit more play on the back and they're they're a little bit loose them actually so what I'm going to do is lap the faces of these so that they can be clamped onto the actual shaft I've just got some 400 grit and I'm just going to gently Take some of that face off there. This uh, this headstock is shimmed up anyway, so the the pressure is only marginally on the bearings. That's much better that. But just a little bit of play in that now so you can see that the bearings contacting the spindle better now as well where it wasn't before. So it wouldn't have mattered how hard I clamped down them them clamps on the top of that bearing wouldn't have fully been in contact with the shaft which would have been no good whatsoever. So I'm just making up some shim stock, little shims to uh, go under the caps now. And what I am doing is tightening them down, just tightening them down. Checking for movement, it's too tight. 
need more shim. So it's the front one that's uh, a bit tight there, so I'll need another shim under it. There was a couple of shims under the original headstock, but they are they are way out. It's maybe going to take me a while. This just uh, just adjusting these little caps, pushing these different shims in until I get to get it just right. That's better. That's even more that one. Very skinny one there. I'll just cut these so they slot in. I have to keep lifting the cap on and off. I just need a shim under the front one now. I will come back when I get a few more shims in, chaps. Well, I pretty much just cracked on with the lathe, as you do. Um, I did do some more filming, but I've lost some footage on one of the cards. Uh, I only had one card in the camera. Uh, this camera records on two cards, but the second card wasn't in, so we it was it wasn't recording basically. But I've finished. I'm going to show you now. From the ground up, stand repainted. Looks really nice. Onto the lathe. There she is in all the glory. I am very very happy. And pleased with the way this gorgeous lathe has come out. And do you know? I can put the DTI on the spindle for you and show you that there's no run out on the spindle. Needle just does not move. Awesome. I can also show you that I've put two uh, center points in the tail stock and the head stock and bring them together. It will hold a feeler gauge beautifully in the center and parallel. I am also very pleased with that. Um, my friend Jerry came round yesterday and we turned the back plate for one of the chucks I have. This was the chuck that came with the lathe and it's a crown uh, crown English chuck, real old one. But the jaws are absolutely mashed on it inside the bin ground. It's 30 thou out on centre. So 
I, I've just not had any luck at all finding jaws for this. And if I grind that out, I know I can grind it, um, but in the on the lathe, but you know it's going to be so big that it's probably not going to hold anything smaller than two or three millimeters, and the scroll is is pretty worn on that as well. So my next option was this Bernard chuck I had, and this feels really tight, although. The scroll is worn on it. Again, a very old chuck. So what we did, we took the original back plate off the crown chuck and we faced it off to take the Bernard. And when we finished, there was zero run out on that face again, which I was just made up with. Um, but when, when I fitted the Bernard chuck, there's 20 thou run out on this one as well. So I've got no option guys, I've got to buy a new chuck. Tailstock is amazingly smooth. Works gorgeous. Just like silk. The only there's a couple of little jobs I've got to do. I've got to fix the lathe down onto the bed. I'm not just doing that just yet because the lathe's moving over to the back of the shop where the Boxford lathe is. Um, and I've got a parallel, I've got to make sure the, the bed is parallel and level. Um, which I cannot really do until I get a decent chuck fitted on it because I need to make sure there's no taper. And also, I've just got to sort the jibs out on this really. Um, it's as I assembled it, I've put the jibs in, nipped them up, but they haven't properly been adjusted yet. Nothing's been adjusted. Um, I am going to make a spacer for there, because the spacer, there was no spacer, there was that horrible old uh, hand wheel on there, which was, it's just wrong, it's the wrong hand wheel for this lathe, um, and it was too big. For the pin that's located. The pin was bent in there. It was bent like a banana. It took some trouble getting the pin out of the uh, lead screw. Got it out. So I've put them two, just them two spaces on there for now and I will make one when the lathe's up and running. Um, the motor was painted. I didn't show you that but I painted the motor as well. The motor's running really nice. Uh, but I, I see guys everything works on her. She's, she's lovely. She's sweet as a nut. I need to get a little oiler for the all these different oilers. One thing I am going to change is these original Myford oilers. I do not like them. I have put wicks in them, but the, the drip rate is still way too fast on them. You just leash oil out. So if I'm working on it for more than maybe 20 minutes, the, it's, the lay's going to run out of oil. So I'm, I possibly a project will be to make some drip oilers for this. I've just got the logo to attach to there, um, but pretty much that is it. That you know she, she's up and running, so I shall switch her on for you. And that's her running. There's a bit of a wobble in the belt. The belt. I shall possibly replace the belt. It's got a. It's got a jiggle in it. It's not the pulleys. The pulleys are set up beautifully. And the belt's got a big kink and a bit of a tear in it. Gears are a little bit noisy, but I expect that's because my gears are noisy. I put oil on them. I don't know whether you should have grease on them or not. Maybe you put grease on them, it'll quieten them down a bit. Pretty much it guys. <laughs> yes, I am looking forward to getting uh, some use out of this lathe. Indeed, for sure. 
I have a milling attachment I would like to show you. It's an original Myford milling attachment. And it's pretty much unused. It's got the grease, still got the Myford grease on it. And I am so pleased that has come with this lathe, guys. Because that I can use. It will come in very, very handy for doing the ball races on folding knives, which is something I've wanted to do for a while. And I'll just sit in those T slots there and we can mill. I, oh, this lathe also came with this, which um, I am not going to use. And I've read up on what it is for. It's for it's kind of for repetitive work. So it's got two 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 holders in it there, um, and a and a stop, so you can wind that across the work and do cuts from the back and from the front. It's I just I just think it's something I'm not going to use at all um, because it's 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 not the sort of work I'm going to get into. And it's got a resettable, it's got a resettable dial on it there, which is quite a nice thing to have. So I am going to sell that, and it will go some way towards uh, my new chuck and some other tooling, some collet sets I want to buy, and other things. It also came with a face plate, one of those. Someone's been, I don't know what someone's been maybe turning wood with that, I don't know. Um, and a couple of holders, jewel holders, work holders there. Really nice. So I will be using, keeping and using them for sure. There's also kind of a myriad of tooling, uh, cutters, myriad and myriad of cutters, um, just, just a box full. Some of them don't won't fit on this lathe, they're just too big, so I'll be giving them, passing them on to somebody else. So that is it for now guys, I'll be back when I've got the chuck. I've ordered a chuck and a new back plate, which should be, should, should be arriving this week no doubt, so early next week and I'll get that, um, I'll show you how I turn the back plate down to fit the chuck. I'll register it. And then we'll see what the run out is on the new chuck. Hopefully there is none. <laughs> so I'll see you quite soon. I better get back to knife making. <laughs> um, thanks, thanks to patrons and thanks subscribers. And thanks for watching guys. I'll see you quite soon. Okay, bye for now.